Well, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is out with its Arctic report card. NOAA says despite summer of 2009 having more sea ice than 2007 or 2008, scientists do see drastic changes from five years ago and at rates faster than anticipated. Among some of the changes in this report for 2009, changing wind patterns because of loss of summer sea ice, continued loss of the Greenland ice sheet, less snow in North America. Jackie Richter Mengi is research a civil engineer at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, joining us on the phone from Hanover, New Hampshire. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome, Susan. Can you assess this report overall? What, what, what has been the most dramatic change since the last report? The most dramatic change since the last report really, I think, are the signs of the, of the fact that you're talking about a system when you talk about the Arctic, when one thing, when you have a loss of sea ice, that that loss of sea ice affects the properties of the ocean and also the atmosphere and the animals that live on them. So we're really beginning to see um, how things are connected in the Arctic and affect one another. Now, you talked about or found that the, uh, the heating of the ocean in areas of extreme summer sea ice loss affects surface air temperatures over the Arctic Ocean. Apparently, they reached four degrees Celsius. How, how serious is that? Put that in some perspective for us. It's serious uh, for a number of reasons. Um, first off, the, the great retreat of the Arctic sea ice cover, as you just mentioned in your opening remarks, really affect the animals that live there, particularly those that are living in coastal areas. They just don't have the platform uh, to live on. But when you start also looking at the connection between the loss of sea ice and the ocean and the atmosphere, you begin to see the retreat of the sea ice cover having um, consistent impacts on the ocean properties that affects things that live in the oceans and also again affects the atmosphere how winds circulate around the arctic and not just how they circulate around in the arctic but affect winds at lower latitudes as well and how how uh, what was the negative impact of ocean uh, sea ice um, the sea ice melting over the ocean causing an unprecedented amount of fresh water Right. Again, what that tends to do is to change the properties of the sea ice co or the ocean again, and that affects how things that are living in the ocean. It can also affect the ocean circulation, and all of these things combine together to affect the climate. And when the climate is affected, we begin to see changes in, in the weather we expect. Now, why do you guys concentrate on the Arctic each year? This is, um, I guess, an especially fragile area. Is it sort of a leading indicator of climate change effects? It's an area where certainly changes are amplified. The thing that distinguishes the Arctic from other parts of the country, except for Antarctica, of course, is the fact that you have ice there all the time. Uh, you have ice in the ocean. You have uh, snow cover in a lot of the region. You have permafrost. And when you're in a warming environment, the first signs of warming that you see can be the, the loss of ice in a whole variety of different ways, again, from sea ice to glacier ice uh, to permafrost. So it really does give us a kind of a bellwether, if you will, of, of uh, what's going on with the climate. So you believe climate change happens first in that area and also happens faster there? I believe that what you can do is see the signal better there. Um, it certainly is amplified. It, it, it's just easier to measure in the Arctic. Um, but importantly, in addition to being easier to measure, it really affects all of the, the things that uh, live in the Arctic, um, from uh, fishes to birds to polar bears to walruses to people. Um, what do you say to those who, who say, well, see, you know, Arctic sea ice also grows and it's just not as reported. New York Times a couple of weeks ago had data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center talking about summer sea ice conditions in the Arctic, and it finds substantial expansion of what's called second year ice flows thick enough, it says, to have persisted through two summers of melting. And they, they sort of called this a possible reprieve, at least temporarily, from, the, from this, uh, you know, stretch of summer meltdowns. Right. Um, what they're talking about is the fact that the I will is the looking at the summer retreat and how far the sea ice comes back. That the composition of that ice or the makeup of that ice is, has some of this older, thicker ice, and that may help stabilize things. But the another point to to be made though is the relatively thin ice still is around the periphery of the Arctic, around the edges in the coastal regions. And it's really hard to recover that sort of ice in this environment where you have continued warming. So I would expect that we'll continue to see a lot of retreat around the edges of the Arctic in years to come. 
And when that sort of thing happens, people begin to make different plans for how they're going to operate in the Arctic uh, from uh, resource recovery to um, tourism to um, uh, trade routes along the area. Um, I just want to ask you about Greenland, because is it true that in the 1980s and the 1990s, the temperature was exceptionally cold, making some subsequent warming inevitable? Um, I don't really, I can't really answer that question very well. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, we appreciate your insight and, uh, and a very interesting report there. Jackie Richter-Mengi, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Susan.